Hey guys, this is Alex Nelson from MA Performance. I'm the mechanical design engineer here, and uh, today we'll be talking about my giant 3D printer, as well as the 3D printing revolution taking place across the world. So 3D printing, as you might have heard, is kind of revolutionizing the way that a lot of companies like MAP operate. It's taking prototyping costs down to such a level where companies are finding it advantageous to do in-house prototyping again, just like they were in the 60s and 70s, but with metal. So now that we have these machines that can shape plastic into pretty much any shape we want in-house, it speeds up our prototyping and engineering a lot because we're able to make prototype airboxes, prototype exhaust jigs, tools, you name it, to help us speed up the production process. So on top of helping MAP organize and create its small fleet of printers that we have here for prototyping, I took it upon myself uh, after hours to create a machine that could help us prototype large intakes, exhaust parts, you name it, molds, fenders, and that is this guy. Um, this printer's name is Moonbot, it rhymes with Moonshot, and uh, it's about a cubic meter and it allows us to print stuff like single piece air intake prototypes um, without having to glue them together. So the details on the machine, it's a Cartesian style, low budget, high volume, high flow 3D printer. So what that means is even though the print head doesn't actually move that fast, it's displacing and heating a ton of plastic. It runs at over two kilowatts constantly. I've blown my cubicle breaker a few times with it. It actually uses two outlets and has three power supplies to manage all of the power consumption. It runs on a Big Tree Tech Octopus V1.1 board. It has nine, right now eight, uh, separate PID controllers to control all of the heated beds. Um, and then there's an Arduino on top of that that manages the power consumption of every bed so that that way we don't blow the breaker and I can run it on a 110 circuit. The whole point of this is that we can have multiple of them directly in the R&D area instead of being out in the shop or somewhere messy. And so it has to run on 110. And that's a big challenge when designing a huge machine like this that has to stay heated and has to flow a lot of plastic. This machine flows about two cubic inches of plastic per hour, which is roughly double of what you would expect from a well-tuned uh, smaller 3D printer like a Prusa or a Tron XY or an Ender 3, or something like that. The actual build volume of the machine is 930 millimeters by 990 millimeters by 875. This means it's almost a cubic meter, and that's perfect because most of the largest things you can hold with your hands, like big air boxes or wheels, are about that size. This is a great alternative for commercial 3D printers, such as a big rep, which is on the lower end of, of industrial large format 3D printers. And that's somewhere around 45 to $50,000, and this replaces the need for having something that expensive. It also replaces having a lot of small printers because we can use the large build volume and high flow rate as if it were multiple small our printers. And we've printed multiple of the same part, having different iterations all at once at the same time on this printer. And it's worked really well for that. The Moonbot uses an aluminum construction. It's entirely bent sheet metal out of aluminum 5032. It works really well to keep the printer super light, and that way all of the motion is really light and doesn't require big stepper motors to drive everything. This keeps the power draw down, and it also keeps the machine's vibration from inertia really low. You might immediately look at the printer and think, well, that's not a very stout Z-axis or way to move the Y gantry. It actually works out perfect because it really doesn't weigh anything since it's all just aluminum extrusion and plastic. In fact, about 25, 35% of the entire printer is 3D printed parts. And lately, a bunch of them have actually been printed directly on that printer, including things like fan shrouds and connectors for different aluminum extrusions. Right now, we're using it mainly just for mock-ups of air boxes, exhaust fixtures, stuff that's a little bit too big to fit on normal printers. But in the future, we intend to use it for fully functional carbon fiber nylon parts, as well as fully functional PET parts for testing air boxes, intakes, and other fixtures in the car. So far, we've printed, as I showed you before, this giant Mark 7 uh, air box. We've also printed several fixtures that helped us make the 2022 BRZ exhaust. So we were able to take our drawing in CAD and transpose it into reality using things to hold the pipe in place so that it's easier to weld. There's also some fun stuff we've done with it, like I 3D printed an entire BBS E88 wheel just to test fit on my car, so that way I was able to move the wheel around and check clearances without carrying around a precious, you know, $2,500 wheel. And the finish has actually been pretty surprising considering how large the nozzle is and how quickly the printer is flowing plastic. A little bit of backstory on why this 3D revolution is so important um, in terms of printers is 
back in the day, in maybe the 60s, 70s, and 80s, you would make prototypes out of epoxy, fiberglass, CNC billet, or some other form of a large, malleable material that you can manipulate with either a CNC machine or someone that you can pay not very much money to go out and get dirty and make your prototype. What 3D printers have allowed us to do since, I guess, around the 1980s when they first came out, is it allows the engineer to go directly to a physical representation of his design without the need for any complex molds, billet machines, or any sort of guesswork in the tolerances during that translation phase uh, when someone else is making the prototype. 3D printers have been around for a while now. In fact, they've been around for about 40 years, which is a long time, but they're just now getting to the level of affordability where it makes sense for companies like MAP to focus their funding for the R&D team on an in-house prototyping facility with a multitude of different 3D printers for different purposes. We have our own carbon fiber nylon capable printers, as well as large format printers, just like Unbot. In the future, I'm really excited to explore opportunities with SLS as well as binder jet materials so that we can print metal on this printer. The big problem with that is that right now there's a lot of constraints around what you can actually put in a binder jet workflow oven uh, in order to cure and center down and oftentimes that results in shrinkage and warping that you don't want in any of your prototypes. But the technology is moving so fast that I think in the near future we'll be printing metal parts with even the basic FDM printers around the shop. I think my next large format printer I'd like to build is of the SLS variety, so that's using a laser to melt nylon powder together, and I think that's really the next step for our prototyping department here at MAP. If you guys like this video, be sure to let us know. I will try my best to answer any questions about the printer in the comments as well. Be sure to subscribe so you can see more videos on how we make stuff here at MA Performance.